today's tutorial is this fishtail halo braid and I've partnered with Weller Shockwaves to show you how to create this look. So I'm starting off with hair that was washed yesterday and after it was washed I applied the Weller Shockwaves Curl and Waves Mousse. As my hair is naturally wavy this just added some body while helping to define my natural wave and natural bounce. And you can buy the Weller Shockwaves collection in Superdrug. The reason I washed my hair yesterday instead of freshly today for this particular look is because once I've slept on my hair my cuticles lay flat and I get less flyaways. And that's why drying the mousse into your hair is really important because it keeps the body there. So I've swept all my hair around to one side and I'm now tying that off with a clear elastic. If you have a fringe like I do then leave that out. If you don't then pull a front section of your hair out and keep that separate. Taking the ponytail we're going to separate that into two individual sections. Keeping quite a tight grip on both sections, we're going to take our index finger on the left side and swoop that behind the left section to take a small sliver of hair, which we're going to pass over to the right hand. So that's now in the right section. Then using our right index finger, we're going to swoop that behind the right section, take a small sliver of hair from the back, pass that round to the front and into our left hand, and that is now part of the left section. So you now should have crisscross. And then we're going to repeat the same process. So on the left side we're sweeping a small section of hair from the back, pulling it round to the front and it's joining the right section. Then we're taking the right index finger, sweeping a small amount of hair from the back, pulling it round to the front and it's joining the left section. And you're going to keep repeating the exact same process which is really easy and really simple all the way down your entire ponytail. My top tip when creating a fishtail braid is to keep your fingers as close to the braid as possible. If you hold your sections too far down, your braid is going to become super loose and it's just going to fall apart. Also try to bear in mind that later on we're going to manipulate the braid and pull it out so it's a bit bigger. So you don't want to pull your sections across too tight because it will be harder for you to manipulate the braid further down the line. If you've got shorter hair, you can definitely add an extension in. Apply the weave around the hairline first before you tie your hair to the side and then just continue to braid as we're doing now with the extension in. Should take you around 5-7 to seven minutes to get to the end of your hair and you should have something that looks like this which you're then going to tie off with a clear elastic. Then I'm just going to section off my fringe, only using my fingers to part it, you don't need to use a comb, it doesn't need to be overly precise. Then I'm going to take a small sliver of hair on my side parting and then using my fingers I'm going to part this into three individual sections and we're going to create a French plait. The only difference from this French braid is we're only going to be picking up from the front. So I'm starting with my three individual sections and I'm going to be crisscrossing them over like we would do doing any normal French plait. But then every time we get to our section that is on the front of our head we're going to add in our fringe to that section. So instead of picking up on the left and picking up on the right like we normally would, we're only going to be picking up on one side, which is the front of your head. If you'd like a more detailed version of how to French plait, I can definitely do a tutorial for you on that. This one is just going to be quick because most people know how to French plait. So you want to continue to plait that until you get to the edge of your hair around about here. And that's where you're going to stop adding hair in from the front. You'll see here that I'm pulling at each section of the braid on the top to loosen it and blow the braid out a little bit so it's just got a bit more shape and looks a little bit bigger. We want it to look quite elegant and shapely, we don't want it to resemble a cornrow. We're then going to continue to plait the hair like a normal plait all the way to the end. Then before you tie it off again you just want to go along the top half of the braid and just pull it out to make it a bit bigger. Then I'm tucking the tail of the braid underneath the hair behind my ear and using a grip to keep that in place. Then before I move on to the opposite side, I like to pull out a couple of tendrils of hair to make it look a little softer and as though you've been wearing it all day. You now want to repeat the same process on this side of your head, creating a French plait, again only picking up from the front. You can expect this French plait to be a lot smaller, obviously we're using a side parting for our hair so we've got less hair to work with on this side, so inevitably the plait is going to be a lot smaller. Try not to plait it so close to your root, you do want a little bit of lift to the hair but this is something that you can do as you go along. Again you want to pull at the top half of your plait to make it look as though it's bigger than it is. This will also help to lift it away from your root and just give it more shape. You want to stop adding hair in from the front about an inch above your earlobe and then just continue to plait all the way down, pulling on each side as you go before securing that behind your ear underneath your hair. Going back to our fishtail braid, I've gone down the length of the braid and pulled at the edges just so it looks a little less uniformed. 
Then you want to place the braid over your head first before you start pulling at it too much so we can work out which side of our braid needs more volume and how we can create a bit more balance before we secure it in place. The left side of my head is obviously a lot thicker because that's where the bulk of my hair is and then as we get to the right side we get into the ends of my hair so obviously the braid is a lot thinner this side so that's the side we need to pull out a little bit more so the braid and the overall hairstyle looks more balanced. Having dried the mousse into the hair means we've got a little bit more grip so the hair's less likely to sort of fall out from the braid as you pull it about which can happen if you've got layers in your hair like I have. I'm securing the ends behind my ear underneath the hair. I pin it in place first then lay the hair over the end to disguise it and then put another pin in place just to make sure that it isn't exposed. To secure the top I like to pull it towards the very front braid that we've got in our fringe then take another hair grip place it underneath the plait so it won't be visible and then press it through the centre of the plait into the root of your hair. You can do that in a couple of areas just to secure everything and make sure it's not going to move and then just make sure your wispy parts are nice and even before you go in with your hairspray. And the one I'm using is Weller Shockwave's Ultra Strong Power Hold Hairspray. This rate's number five in terms of hold, so it's really gonna keep everything in place all day long. You just wanna hold it about 20 centimeters away from your face and just mist over your hair. And that completes my fishtail halo braid. This is perfect for the wedding season if you've got a prom coming up, a festival, or maybe you're going on holiday and you want a nice elegant updo. Please give the tutorial a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can hit the subscribe button on screen now. You can also check out my previous tutorial and my social handles are on screen now. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!